Hello everyone and welcome back to the program. You've probably heard of the kingdom of God spoken of as a nice sentiment in your heart. Many people reduce God's kingdom to an ethereal, unreal nothing. Others have misrepresented that the church is the kingdom. Some confuse it with the millennium. Still others, in the early 20th century, claim the British Empire was the kingdom of God. Why should there be so much confusion on this all-important subject? On today's program, we examine the seventh and final mystery discussed in Herbert W. Armstrong's powerful book, The Mystery of the Kingdom of God. The Trumpet Daily. If you watch this program or visit our website at thetrumpet.com, you know how closely we follow world events and explain their significance from a prophetic standpoint. And yet with respect to Bible prophecy, look at how confused most people are in the world today. I mean, one third of the Bible is prophecy, and most of it is for our day today. Yet almost no one understands Bible prophecy. And do you know why? Because almost no one understands the true gospel that Jesus Christ preached. They don't believe that Christ will return to this earth and establish the government of God on earth and set up God's kingdom on earth. And so they don't understand the many prophecies that tell us what will happen in the lead up to the kingdom being established on earth. They don't understand about God's purpose for mankind. They're in complete ignorance of just about everything, really, when it comes to the Bible, God's purpose, Bible prophecy. Let's begin our study in Mark chapter 4, the Gospel of Mark. The mystery of the kingdom of God, it's connected directly with its associated mystery, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's so much confusion in the world today with respect to the gospel that Jesus preached. We'll begin here, as I say, in Mark 4, verse 10, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable, and he said to them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Notice he says they're the mystery of the kingdom of God. Christ brings out two important points here. That the true disciples, Christ's disciples, they understand the mystery. And he also says there in those same verses, that that's what he came to, to preach. The gospel of the kingdom of God. This mystery of the kingdom of God. You can look at Mark 1 and verse 14 and see that when Jesus came into Galilee, he came preaching the kingdom of God. Luke 9 and verse 2. Over there it says that Christ told his disciples, those first century apostles, the ones who, who would become the apostles, he told them to go and to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so Jesus Christ went about preaching that gospel about the kingdom, the soon coming kingdom of God. And he told his disciples to do the same thing. And yet, as he said there in those two verses I just read, this is a great mystery to the whole world. This is a mystery, this truth about the true gospel that Jesus preached, which was the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let's turn over to Luke now. The Gospel of Luke will go to uh, chapter 1, Luke 1 and verse uh, 31. This mystery that we're talking about here today, uh, it's explained, thoroughly explained, in Mr. Armstrong's book, Mystery of the Ages. We've been working right through the course of this year to distribute 2,000 of these books. We've got about 250 to go. And we're down to the last couple of weeks in this calendar year. We hope that you'll write down the phone number and call our operators today to receive this wonderful book, free of charge, no cost or obligation to you. 
and study these mysteries. There's seven of them discussed in this book. The last of them is the mystery of the kingdom of God. 53 pages of this book is devoted to that subject, the mystery of the kingdom of God. It's the second biggest chapter in the book. So important, and it's because there's so much confusion with respect to this subject. What is the true gospel that Jesus preached? What is this mystery of the kingdom of God? Carrying on, Luke 1 and verse 31, And behold, you shall, this is the angel of God speaking to Mary, And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, David ruled from a, an actual literal throne in ancient Israel. He was a king, ruling over subjects, ruling over a territory, administering government. And here it says that Jesus Christ would be given the throne of his father David. Verse 33 continues, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, why don't the churches of this world ever mention these verses? Millions of people have attended services their whole lives and have never heard scriptures like this or have never had scriptures like this explained to them. You can look about in this world, as I say. David and ancient Israel, that's a perfect example. But what about all the other kingdoms or empires of this world that we live in? It's easy for people to wrap their minds around the fact that there's a king, an administration under him, offices under him, laws that he administers. It's a government, there's territory, there's subjects and so on. And yet when it comes to God's kingdom, so many people just want to spiritualize it away and say that, well, it's a nice sentiment or maybe it's the church, as I said there at the top, or maybe it's this or maybe it's that. These scriptures that I'm reading to you today, they reveal plainly that God is supreme ruler. They reveal that Jesus was born to be king. He was born to rule. He was born to set up the kingdom of God on this earth. That's what he's going to do when he returns to this earth. That's what will happen at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will become the supreme ruler of this earth and the governments of this world, this world, the governments of this world will cease to exist. We'll see that later in the second segment when we go over to Revelation 11, where it says the nations or the governments of this world will become the kingdom of God. At Jesus Christ's return, now, so many people don't accept this message today because as Jesus explained, in the Gospels, they don't want God's rule over them. They don't want the coming kingdom of God. They don't want God's authority ruling in their lives. They want to be left to themselves. Now, a lot of people want to be considered religious. They want to think of themselves as a religious being. But really, it comes down to this point of government, doesn't it? Authority. The rule of God. Jesus is coming as supreme ruler, and he's going to rule over all the earth. That's what your Bible says in hundreds of passages, really. Let's look over at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 18. This is that exchange, this well-known exchange that Jesus had with, with Pilate. John, chapter 18, and we'll start in uh, verse 33. It says here, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, uh, and called Jesus and said unto him, Are you the king of the Jews? Now Jesus didn't come the first time to take control of the reins of government on earth. He didn't come the first time to sit on the throne of David and to rule the earth at his first coming. Many people thought that he did. They wanted to put a crown on his head, so many of the Jews. They wanted the, the kingdom to be set up right then in their day. But it wasn't time for God's kingdom to be set up and established. It was time for the message to go out to the whole world. 
The news announcement. That's what the word gospel means. Good news. It was time for the news announcement of God's soon coming kingdom to be established on this earth. And so that's what Jesus preached. That's what he told his disciples to preach. That's what we preach to you. Carrying on in this exchange here, look at verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Now the word world there, it's, it's the Greek word cosmos. It means the system or this age of man's way. In other words, my kingdom is not of this age. It's of a future age. That's what he's saying here. My kingdom is not of this world or this age. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So he admitted to having a kingdom, but he said there it's not to be set up, not in this present age. It's for a future time. It's for a future age. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that, it, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Well, yes, I am a king. That's why I came into this world. We read in Luke 1 about that's how he was, or why he was born to be king. And that's what he told Pilate right before he was to be crucified. He is coming back. He's coming back to rule. So much more is discussed in this book, Mystery of the Ages, about this all-important mystery, the mystery of the kingdom of God. And as I said there at the top, the reason that so many people don't understand prophecy, the reason they don't understand the prophecies of God is because they're confused on this mystery, the kingdom, and the message that Jesus uh, taught and preached. The kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now we discuss so many of these prophecies of God in our wonderful magazine. It comes out every month. The Trumpet Magazine, we'd like to send it to your mailbox right here in the UK so that you can be informed on these many prophecies that lead right up to the return of Jesus Christ. We have one right here, page two. Europe's old demons return. What's the significance of this? Europe's old demons return. There's a lot in here about history as well as prophecy. So much every single month, as I say. Another one here by my father. Has Germany's strongman finally arrived? We've been prophesying, it says. We've been prophesying of this for 70 years. Crises in Germany and Europe are reaching new heights. Watch what happens next. This magazine will keep you informed. It will tell you where we're headed and how it all leads right up to the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. Has Germany's strongman finally arrived? The next page over you see about the Herbert W. Armstrong connection. He's the one that talked about this for so many decades. And now we see these prophecies coming to pass. We see these prophecies happening. This one here, page 12, why Jerusalem is bleeding. What about all this violence in the Middle East? What about all of these terrorist attacks? Not just in Jerusalem, in Europe, in the United States, all over the world. But Jerusalem is the powder keg. That's what your Bible says. That's what Bible prophecy says. That's why we need to watch Jerusalem. And then over here, a new global arms race. What is the significance of this? Even as you see the United States and the UK really hollowing out their militaries, downsizing their military uh, power, all of these other forces, all of these other nations, all of these other powers are accumulating so many weapons of mass destruction. There's a, a wonderful infographic right here in the middle of the magazine that talks about the arms buildup that's going on right now. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Trumpet magazine, make sure when you call to request Mystery of the Ages that you ask the operator to sign you up for a free subscription to the Trumpet magazine. We'll be right back. Jesus Christ came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yet few preach about the kingdom of God today, for they have lost all knowledge of what it is. 
A prominent evangelist once said that the gospel of the kingdom of God is not for us today. Some denominations proclaim a gospel of grace, some what they call a gospel of salvation, most a gospel about Christ, some a social gospel. Some churches claim either that their particular denomination or Christianity as a whole constitutes the kingdom of God. But what does the Bible say? The truth about the kingdom of God is indeed a great mystery to this world. It's also the most glorious good news to those whose minds have been opened to the truth of the Bible. To remove the mystery from your Bible and to understand the truth about the soon coming kingdom of God, request Herbert W. Armstrong's masterful work, Mystery of the Ages. We offer it freely to those who are genuinely interested in understanding the Bible. You don't have to live in the fog of the unknown. You don't have to wonder why you were born or where this world is headed. The great mysteries of life can be made known to you if you choose to know. The choice is yours. To order the free material online, just visit our website at thetrumpet.com and don't forget to tune in to kpcg.fm every weekday afternoon at 1 p.m. I told you before the break about our wonderful news magazine, the Philadelphia Trumpet. Make sure you subscribe to that. I should have also mentioned that we have a radio program that you can hear live every day, every weekday, right here in the UK. And you can get to that station on your web browser, kpcg.fm, every day, every weekday afternoon at 1 p.m. You can listen to the Trumpet Daily radio program. I host that particular program and talk about a lot of the news stories that you can read about in this magazine and also at our website, thetrumpet.com, if you haven't tuned in yet. And if you'd like to receive daily instruction grounded in the words of Jesus Christ, grounded in the Holy Bible, make sure you log on to kpcg.fm. Let's continue our study in the book of Acts. Get your Bible. Read along with me. Here we are in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Repent you therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the eternal. A time of refreshing is coming. A revival, you could say. And it's brought on by the presence of the eternal. This was written, keep in mind, after Jesus Christ had been crucified and ascended to, to the heavens. Let's notice verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. As I say, this was written well after Jesus Christ had been crucified and resurrected. And here it says God will send him again. It's talked about all through the Bible. The prophets wrote about it anciently. The disciples in the first century, the, the first century apostles, the apostle Paul, they all discussed this. Jesus himself said, if I go, I'm coming back again. That's in John 14. Notice the next verse, verse 21, it says, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of His holy prophets since the world began. God has been speaking this. God has been proclaiming this. It's a great mystery to most people. That mystery is solved in this book, Mystery of the Ages. That's why you need it in your library. You need to study it regularly because you can understand the truth about Christ's gospel and about the soon coming kingdom of God. Let's go over now to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 11. This is how God is going to establish utopia on earth, believe it or not, by sending His Son to this earth. Now, it's not going to happen all at once, as uh, Mr. Armstrong uh, explained back in 1984. He said, even after Christ comes to remove Satan and to bring in peace, prosperity, and happiness, the process will have to begin with children. Children will have to be started out right 
adults will have to be uh, de-educated, you could say, have to unlearn all the false knowledge, ideas, and philosophies they have before they can be taught the true way toward peace and successful and happy and useful lives. He says, utopia will not appear suddenly at the appearing of Christ. It won't happen suddenly, but Jesus Christ's appearing certainly will. And it's going to catch most people off guard. He's coming like a thief in the night, Paul said. Most people are totally asleep, totally asleep to the reality of these prophecies of God. Let's notice Revelation 11 and verse 15, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Is this, I mean, does this sound like a nice sentiment in your heart? People want to spiritualize this away. But look, the kingdoms of this world become Christ's. That's what the Bible says. Notice what Mr. Armstrong wrote. This is in Mystery of the Ages. He said, this makes completely plain the fact that the kingdom of God is a literal government. Even as the Chaldean Empire was a kingdom, even as the Roman Empire was a kingdom, so the kingdom of God is a government. It is to take over the government of the nations of the world. That's the truth of the Bible. That's what's discussed in Mystery of the Ages. That's why you need this book. We offer it to you freely. There's no cost or obligation to you. All of your information remains secure. We won't sell your address or anything like that. We just want you to have this book. Why not call now and get one? So that you can begin your study and understand the truth of the gospel message. Verse 18, it says, And the nations were angry, and your wrath has come. Well, you can read the rest of it on your own time. We're running out of time. But this just points out that the nations of this world are not going to be happy about the return of Christ. Can you imagine that? They won't receive Him well. That's what your Bible says. Not only here in Revelation 11, but in Revelation 19 as well. Let's notice this chapter. So many verses that people just are totally unaware of. They don't know what the Bible says about this because they're so far removed from the truth of the gospel. This is Revelation 19, 11. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Jesus is coming to make war with the nations of the earth. He's coming to make war. He's coming to judge the nations of this world, as Joel 3 says. Staying here in Revelation 19, verse 14 says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Here's this angelic army joining him. Other scriptures talk about the army of the saints also assisting him. The first fruits, the disciples, the true disciples of Christ. Verse 15, And out of his mouth goes a sharp uh, sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness of, and wrath of, of Almighty God. See, he's coming back to rule this earth with a rod of iron. To rule, to administer God's government, to set up and establish God's kingdom. Why can't people understand the plain truth of the true gospel message? Verse 16, And he has on his vesture... And on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. A union of church and state. He's king and he's got kings under him. There's a full administration that's been prepared and made ready. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. An entire administration that'll be set up and established at the return of Christ to rule the world. Notice what Mr. Armstrong said in uh, the Wonderful World Tomorrow book, church and state will be united under Christ. There will be one government over all nations. There will be one church, one God, one religion, one educational system, one social order. And as in God's original pattern in ancient Israel, they will be united. Finally, finally, unity in religion, unity in government, peace, cooperation, and happiness all over the earth. Yes, utopia is coming. It is coming. It's going to be set up and established in a way that most people are totally unaware of. It's all discussed in this book, particularly the last 53 pages. 
that have to do with the mystery of the kingdom of God. Make sure you write the number down, the phone number, and send us your request. Call us today. Ask for this book I've told you all about, the Trumpet Magazine as well. You need both. You need both. If you prefer not to call, send us a text. Text your information to 80800. Just type REQ to begin with, and then your address following that, and we'll make sure, just in the next week or two, that you have this material sent to your home so that you can begin your study today. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. <music>